back by popular demand, pink is for blobfish. So this is part two of this um, uh, Learn About the World book about pink animals and specifically weird pink animals and um, a little bit about them. And of course, the cover has our favorite, the pink blobfish, who's got this gelatinous goo in just the shape of a blob. Our next creature is um, this one. Pink is for orchid, orchid mantises. Now take a look at that orchid mantise. Mantises is for more than one, and mantise is for one. Does that look like something you know? Yeah. Let's read a little bit more about it. With flattened petal-like arms that stand out against green leaves, orchid mantises look like harmless, beautiful flowers. But these predator, wait, these pretenders, hmm, pretender is someone who pretends to be something they're not. But these pretenders have strong arms and big appetites, patiently waiting to snatch up any insect that comes too close. This is a really cool fact. This is our cartoon uh, orchid mantis. And this is our real picture of a mantis, the orchid mantis. Made you look. <laughs> Sometimes nature can be tricky. Scientists wanted to know if the insects that landed on orchid mantises were really fooled into thinking they were flowers. They came up with an experiment where they gave insects a choice. Insects a choice? Hmm. They could land on an orchid mantis or on a real Malaysian flower. And voila! It turned out that the insects picked mantises more often than actual flowers. <gasps> oh my goodness. So the real insects got fooled by this one. That is a strange creature. Pink is for pygmy seahorses. Oh, look at those guys. Aren't they cute? They've got red splotches and red bumps and those cute little faces. <laughs> Pygmy seahorses hide out in plain sight, nestled amongst the pink coral of the ocean floor. They are extremely fragile. That means they can um, get harmed easily. So it's important for scuba divers to be careful around them. Even the bright flash of a camera can disturb them. So here's our cartoon character of the pygmy seahorse. And here's an interesting fact. Number one, dad. In most animal species, it is usually the female who becomes pregnant and gives birth. But seahorses don't care about tradition. Instead, male seahorses become pregnant and carry the eggs in a pouch on their bellies until they hatch. If that isn't enough to earn them the Dad of the Year award, they also keep the eggs clean and protect them from predators. And the cup says, number one, Dad. That reminds me of another book um, and another sea creature where the male animal takes care of the uh, baby or this the, the young creatures. I'll have to read that one too. Pink is for roseate spoonbills. Oh, look at that beautiful pink feathers. And you see the bill right here? It's a spoonbill because it's shaped like a spoon. That's where it gets its name. And then the roseate is for the color that it is. 
Isn't that pretty? That's really pretty. And here's our sort of our cartoon character. Not all pink animals are born pink. When baby spoonbills hatch, they are chubby and covered in downy white feathers. As they grow up, their feathers turn various shades of pink because of pigments in the shrimp they eat. Oh! So because they eat pink shrimp, it turns their feathers pink. Do you know another animal who uh, has pink feathers because they eat pink shrimp? Mm-hmm. Were you thinking of pink flamingos? That's right. What's our fun fact? Want a feather in your cap? In the past, women used to wear hats decorated with vibrant spoonbill feathers. Fans made of spoonbill wings were also very popular. Because of aggressive plume hunters, the roseate spoonbill was once nearly extinct. That means there were very, very few of those creatures living wild in the world. By 1940, there were only about 30 breeding pairs left in a Florida flock that previously contained thousands. Today, thanks to conservation efforts, their numbers have rebounded. Oh, yeah, that would be very sad if we did not have any more of roseate spoonbills in the world. So somebody in Florida spoke up for the spoonbills. P is for pink Amazon river dolphins. Oh, look at those guys. That is one beautiful dolphin. Looks like he's having fun there too. Amazon river dolphins are very intelligent and they have extremely complex ways of hunting. Several dolphins work together as a group to drive fish near the shore, like a pack of dogs herding sheep. With the fish stranded close to land, the dolphins can enjoy a fishy feast together. Wow! That is so cool! So the dolphins work together to hunt for their fish. Here's a different dolphin. Unlike dolphins from the open ocean, Amazon, Amazon river dolphins have flexible necks. They sweep their snouts through the watery vegetation, flushing prey from their hiding places. A new species of dolphin, the Arguarian river dolphin, was just discovered in 2014. That's just a few years ago. In fact, that's kind of around the time you guys were born. It was the very first new river dolphin species found in almost a century. That's a hundred years. River dolphins are incredibly rare, so finding a new species is a huge feat. So that fun fact was learning about their, their necks and how their necks um, work different, are more flexible than dolphins that live in the open ocean. So their, uh, their river dolphins have adapted to their environment. Their necks have changed because of their environment. Let's read one more today. Oh, this one's a cute, cute one. <laughs> pink is for pink fairy armadillos. Look at that feathery guy. Isn't he? Look at all those parts of his uh, body back there, those little lines. And then look at those feathery feet. I wonder if they would tickle. Hmm. How big is this one? This one's only four inches. Let's see, four inches. That's maybe, wait, that's maybe about my finger size. Wow, that's really tiny. You won't find these creatures in any fairy tale. Pink fairy armadillos are very rare, very real and very hard to find. They have flexible pink rosy shells on their backs. So that's this part here. This is a flexible shell. And enormous claws 
that they use to burrow through the dirt. Ah, oh, there's their claws down here. Look at that. Those almost look like fingernails. They must be hard and bony to get through the dirt. They're only seen by humans when they emerge above ground. This happens so rarely that some armadillo researchers never see them in the wild. Wow. So here's my uh, cartoon, Pink Fairy Armadillo. He's uh, the cartoon character. And what's the fun fact we're going to learn? Little Digger's Big Claws. At over five feet long from nose to tail, the giant armadillo could barely fit in the trunk of your car. But the pink fairy armadillo, the smallest of its kind, could easily fit in your shoe. Despite their tiny size, they are excellent diggers, and they even come equipped with a special butt plate to help them dig tunnels. Once they loosen dirt with, they, with their long claws, they back up and use this plate to compact the dirt. Oh, I don't know if you can see that little picture in here. It's kind of in the, in the fold, but it looks like this part, maybe that's the butt plate that they back up and then they pack the dirt with that part. On the rare occasions that pink fairy armadillos go above ground, their big claws make it difficult to walk on hard surfaces. So let's take a look at that again. All right. So that was uh, part two of Pink Blob. Pink is for blobfish. <laughs>